Okay, this is question 16 in the book of questions. Uh, this is the 2013 revised edition, by the way, uh, in case you're following along with Lindy Beige and his quest to answer questions. Uh, he has the older version. Now, uh, question 16 goes, if women were just fundamentally smarter and harder working than men, would you support putting rules in place to ensure that men would share equally in the best jobs and fill half the slots at the best schools? If so, how would you explain the fairness of this to a smart, dedicated woman displaced by a less qualified man? This is a good question. This is an important question, and everybody should think hard about it. Okay? Um, now, the first part of the question, would I support measures to, to ensure men uh, got an equal share of the, the jobs and slots in schools? No, I would not. Uh, and the reason for that is equality of outcome can never be ensured and it will never be fair when you try to do it. You must always artificially disadvantage somebody else in order to bring one person up into some equal state. You have to introduce some unfairness to the system. Uh, so uh, I support, and uh, I, this probably has come through in previous videos and, and things I've written in the past, I support equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. Uh, equality of outcome is ludicrous. It's never going to happen. Everybody's bloody different. Since we're all different, it, it, it stands to reason that we, given equal opportunities, equal access to everything, and I'll get back to that equal access thing in a moment, uh, given equal access to everything, no artificial barriers, the end result is going to be different, if only because we have different interests. And now let's get back to e equality of opportunity. Uh, a lot of people equate equality of opportunity with uh, all groups being represented equally everywhere. But no, that's not equality of opportunity. That's e equality of outcome if all groups are, are represented equally everywhere. That's equality of outcome. It's not the same thing as equality of opportunity. So you, you cannot use the demographic split in a profession to determine if uh, equality of opportunity is at play. You cannot. Uh, you can't even use the breakdown, the demographic split um, under whatever criteria in, say, a particular profession to identify whether there's uh, systemic racism or discrimination at play. You can't do that. It, the end result says nothing about the opportunities that were available at the start. Now, uh, first for uh, access to education, that was one part of this here, uh, slots at the best schools. Uh, now, uh, if under this regime where women were fundamentally smarter and harder working, uh, which I don't think they are, and I don't think men are either, so uh, don't, go, don't jump all over me on that one. But anyway, uh, even if women were fundamentally smarter and harder working, even if they were, uh, I would not support any measures to help the poor, disadvantaged men. Uh, so, say on average women were, were going to be, you know, say, 50% uh, smarter, that means, uh, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be overrepresented in every field, right? Uh, it depends on the requirements of the field. Uh, I would expect them to be underrepresented in some uh, of some occupations and overrepresented in others versus an even split, just like we see now. Uh, 
I, I would expect that. Uh, because just because they're fundamentally smarter or fundamentally harder working, it doesn't mean that their interests are necessarily going to line up with what we think they, they would want to do. Um, I, I, and, you know, uh, let's just put it this way. Uh, what I would support is access to uh, any particular curriculum should be restricted only to those who have passed the prerequisites, who have the required prerequisites. And then if you have an overabundance, you have to pare that down so maybe you go for the ones that it did better on those prerequisites. But it shouldn't matter whether those people are male or female, whether they get in. Uh, it should only matter on the objective criteria you've set. So do they have the prerequisites? If they don't, then you wash them out immediately, no matter who they are. And uh, then uh, did they make the, you know, are they in the top X that, uh, that would fill up all the slots available? If so, then they should be in. It shouldn't matter, male or female. And that goes in today's world or this hypothetical one where women are fundamentally smarter. Uh, it, presumably, if they're harder working and smarter, they will have a better shot at getting the higher grades or whatever in the prerequisites, presumably. And then you would expect them to have higher representation in those particular courses. Uh, that doesn't mean that there will be, because it'll depend on whether they're even interested in going into that field or not. Uh, and this does not mean that there won't be men who also qualify and who are smart enough or whatever for the field and can pass the courses and all of that jazz. It doesn't mean that, uh, because not everybody is the same. Uh, and anytime you're comparing women and men or or one group, one population or to another, uh, you're comparing on averages, uh, measures of central tendency, uh, and you're going to have some sort of uh, bell curve-like distribution, probably, which means you're going to have outliers in either direction. And uh, there's always going to be those outliers that are likely going to qualify, uh, uh, e even if uh, on average, men aren't going to make the grade for some particular occupation, or vice versa for women. Uh, so that's the equality of opportunity, no artificial barrier, where you get into a, a uh, course based on merit and merit alone, the objective criteria, where your gender makes no difference. If that means there's three men and 97 women, so be it. If that means there's three women and 97 men, so be it. As long as the testing is fair, as long as the uh, entrance criteria is fair, uh, you know, is, is objectively fair and applied fairly, then it doesn't matter. And and presumably, uh, if that goes in the, the training side of things, then you would need to have the same thing when, in the hiring uh, uh, practices. Uh, now, you, you might, even if you are all for the uh, equality of opportunity, the fair application of objective criteria for, for admittance and so on in academia, uh, you might still fall down on the side of, uh, well, we have to do something to ensure that men who are qualified don't get excluded just because they're men. And sure, that is a fair concern. And we have issues like that in our current world in male-dominated areas and in female-dominated areas. Uh, let's be purely honest here. Uh, so... Uh, Sure, you might think that uh, you need protections there, but it turns out that adding those protections just means that employers have to hire people who are less qualified on average. Uh, you end up with uh, affirmative action nonsense where uh, you end up with, if you have, in this case, a man and a woman 
uh, applying for the same job and the company already has 10 women to and five men that they have to hire the man qualified or not whether the woman's better qualified or not uh, and uh, if you think about it and, and you flip man and woman around in that if you thought that it was a good idea for uh, sticking up for the men so that they would get 50% of the, the jobs um, flip it around and then think about it in context in the context of today's society do you still agree if you do okay fine but uh, if you don't then why did you agree in the first place because it's the same exact thing um, now there's a good chance that most of you watching agree with this affirmative action stuff uh, but I want you to think about it and think about it carefully uh, because this is where the second part of this question comes in how do you justify the fairness of it if I work hard get the qualifications necessary to do a job and I am objectively better qualified than some other person in some other demographic and we both apply for the same job how is it fair that I as the more qualified individual do not get it think about that think about how you can explain that without falling back on but fairness because that's circular it's fair because it's fair does not hold water and you need to make sure the argument doesn't go around in circles uh, so think about it hard uh, and, and think about, it about think hard about the implications if you're for this type of action think hard about the implications of the long-term implications of this affirmative action stuff this um, equality of outcomes thing think hard about it how does it impact the people who are qualified but can't get work because they have the wrong color skin or the wrong genitalia? How does it impact their mental health, their lives? How does it impact the person who isn't really qualified for the job they applied for but they got it because of the color of their skin or the genitalia they have? How does it affect them when they discover that they're not particularly able to do the job that they got uh, and that they won't be fired because they can't do the job uh, how does that impact them mentally think about it uh, you think about the psychological impact of this and then think about what it would mean for the the people who are actually qualified on the disadvantage the now disadvantaged side so in the case of this question the women think about what it means for them are they going to work as hard strive as hard to apply this intelligence that they have to to the uh, training and the applications for jobs are they going to work as hard at it well probably not because uh, the end result is they have a minimal shot at getting that good job compared to that man that is that just squeaks through uh, the woman now has to be that much better to make the cut against a bunch of men who are less qualified um, just because of the affirmative action so more women are going to work less hard and you're going to create yourself uh, a, a wider gap between the uh, the high performing and the medium performing women uh, and, and you're gonna have a lot you're gonna have other implications as well so think it through do you really want affirmative action is it really doing any good uh, because that's what this question is actually about it doesn't actually use that inflammatory buzzword in, in affirmative action uh, but this is exactly what this question is about 
And my answer, as I said at the start, is no, I would not support this. Even though I would probably benefit from it, I would not support it. Because then I'll never know if I got ahead because of my abilities or because of my gender. And you might be thinking, well, what do you think about this male privilege uh, patriarchy stuff in, in the modern world? Well, if it exists, and nobody has convinced me that it does systematically, if it exists, then no, I wouldn't like it. I, I don't like the notion. Uh, but nobody has demonstrated to me that there really is this male privilege patriarchy thing that the social justice warrior idiots are on about lately. Uh, sure, there are instances of discrimination. Uh, this, I will admit, because it's objectively true. There are instances of discrimination. But I do not believe that it is endemic to our culture that this discrimination exists. Uh, it's again, people are taking the outcome and using that to, uh, to conclude that there must be inequality of opportunity due to discrimination. And sure, there may be elements of that in some places, but there are other places where it goes the other way. So uh, I'm not, I haven't seen any compelling evidence that the gender pay gap and all of that stuff that, that is harped on about still exists any, at anywhere near the magnitude that it may have in the past. I don't have the uh, research and numbers in front of me, so I, I can't draw a concrete conclusion there. But I haven't seen anyone presenting any, any evidence that, would, that passes scrutiny, that isn't cherry-picked or misrepresented in some way to back up their claims. Uh, and nobody has been able to back up their claims that, the, that if it does exist, that it's getting worse or that it's not improving. So, uh, you know, there you have it, right? I'm not being a hypocrite on this. I don't believe that in any sort of affirmative action discrimination, but I don't believe in, in discrimination without affirmative action either. But there has to be some level of discrimination when you're hiring people for a job or filling limited spots. And, but that discrimination needs to be objectively applied to everybody and not varied because someone happens to be either in a privileged group or in an underprivileged group. This is, this is the conclusion there. So anyway, uh, to, uh, to sum up a long ramble, uh, if women were fundamentally smarter and harder working, I would not support any measure that would be designed to ensure that men got 50% of, of the good jobs or 50% of the education slots. I would not support it. And therefore, I don't have to explain why uh, it would have to be fair, uh, why it would be fair to, uh, to implement this, because I don't support it, and it wouldn't be fair. That's why I don't support it, is because it would not be fair. Anyway, uh, this is an important question. So uh, I, I want everybody that watches this to think about it carefully. Do you agree with me? Or do you agree that affirmative action is a good thing? And if affirmative action is a good thing, why is it fair? Explain it. And go ahead and do that in the comments below. Uh, I'd be happy to have a, uh, a, a flame war da in, down in the comments. Uh, you know, it'd be fine. Uh, I'll try not to moderate it too severely, but if you get too ridiculous in leaving your comments, I will uh, block them. So, 
uh, you know, try to be civil. Uh, anyway, go ahead and leave a comment if you like. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Uh, I'd be perfectly fine if this video had 10,000 dislikes and no likes. It'd be fine with me. I think it was funny, actually. And it would kind of prove my point, probably. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching. I know it's been a long ramble.